Congress in itself is trying to test the waters and the opposition is also looking for some kind of success. Well, there's some bad news for the Congress and there's some good news for the Congress and obviously similarly for the opposition. First, the bad news uh, for the Congress party and that is that in Gujarat, the opposition BJP is sweeping Gujarat. As far as the good news is concerned, it basically comes from Rajasthan, where the Congress has improved its position, perhaps uh, belying a lot of forecasts earlier. It's improving its position there and is doing pretty well in Madhya Pradesh as well. Uh, at the moment, the story of the day, which is Allahabad, uh, no official information is available yet, but we have some information from a prior exit poll which we carried out yesterday, uh, which we shall be providing you later on in the program. But first, let's have a look at the current uh, situation in terms of charts. First of all, in Allahabad, as I said, no information. If we can have the chart in front of us, it would be useful. Uh, the Lok Sabha party position is as follows. In Sirsa, the Loktal has recorded a resounding victory. That is a result. It's won by a margin of 1,15,000 votes. So Devi Lal Chaudhary, Devi Lal's uh, constituency and popularity re is retained, although we shall look at certain information on Faridabad later on, which it, uh, suggests that it's a bit too early to say that there's no slippage in his popularity. As far as Pali is concerned, uh, this is the sweep that I was talking about in Rajasthan for the Congress I. They're leading by 38,000 votes. And next, Godra, uh, that's in, Madhya, uh, in uh, Gujarat, which I was again saying bad news for the Congress. The Janta Party is gaining that seat from the Congress. It was previously held by the Congress, and they are leading at the moment by 15,290 uh, votes. If we move over to the uh, assembly position, because they, apart from the seven Lok Sabha seats, there are 11 assembly elections taking, by elections taking place, and they're again all over the north of India. Uh, uh, I think it's about seven states that are actually being tested, where the waters are being tested. And in many ways, this could be a significant pointer for the uh, uh, ruling party and for the opposition to decide on when the next general elections will be and what are the tactics that one should use. But before we go on to that, and we go on to talking about Allahabad, uh, it's over to you, Vinod. Bharat mein Hindi Fashi Kshetra mein pehla opchunav hai, jo lada ja raha hai. Aur uh, abhi tak jo नतीजे तो सामने नहीं आए सिवाय एक के लेकिन जो ट्रेंड्स हैं उसके मुताबिक स्थिति कुछ इस तरह से है कि गुजरात में बीजेपी की स्थिति मजबूत होती जा रही है और राजस्थान में कांग्रेस अपनी स्थिति में पहले के मुकाबले ज़्यादा सुधार ला रही है अभी तक मिले जो अभी तक सूचना हमारे पास आई है उसके मुताबिक लोकसभा में पाली में राजस्थान पाली में कांग्रेस अड़तीस वोटों से आगे है और गोधरा में जनता पार्टी पंद्रह वोटों से आगे है और असेंबली इलेक्शंस में कांग्रेस आई की स्थिति पांच जगह पर आगे है और बीजेपी दो जगह पर आगे है एक एग्जिट पोल किया गया था इलाहाबाद में कल जो प्रोनोय जिसके बारे में भी बता रहे थे उसके मुताबिक हालांकि कोई सरकारी सूचना उपलब्ध नहीं है इलाहाबाद इलेक्शन के बारे में फिर भी एग्जिट पोल के जो सूचना है उसके आधार पर प्रोनोय ने कुछ रिजल्ट निकाले हैं प्रोनोय एग्जिट पोल क्या होता है एंड वट्स इन्फॉर्मेशन वेल विनोद be uh, sort of slightly precautionary about what we are going to talk about now because there's not, uh, counting has only just started in Allahabad. Um, the fact was that there was a delayed counting. It started only at 2.30 and then they first sort the votes and then they start counting it after about two hours. But because of the intense interest, we decided to experiment. And yesterday, we asked voters as they came out of the polling booths who they had voted for. This is a standard practice all over the world. It's a fairly scientific method of testing voter opinion and uh, we did put out in most of the papers this morning the results of that exit poll which is carried out by uh, me along with an organization called Mark uh, and we'll be giving you some of the results but the basic finding was that and again I should say that one should take this as an experiment and we should look as the evening unfolds and as we get hard results in whether exit polls work in India but I thought I'd share it with you that the exit poll shows First of all, that VP Singh is going to win Allahabad fairly easily, and that he would get over 55% of the vote and lead by a margin of 25%, which would mean that he would get 
about 1 lakh. Now, if we look at these at the more detailed analysis of the exit poll, first of all, the overall thing before I get into these details is that VP Singh will win Allahabad according to this tentative exit poll by about 1 lakh votes or so. Again, I should reiterate that no information yet from Allahabad, but this is what the exit poll said, and as you can see, the source is Marg. VP Singh did equally well in rural and urban areas, and uh, his lead was 34% in the urban area, as you can see on top on the right-hand side, and in the rural areas, 31%, slightly better, therefore, in the urban parts of Allahabad. But that could be a statistical variation and should not be taken too seriously. But what is more important, actually, that the poll shows is that the Congress, although trailing amongst women, did better than they did amongst men. They, uh, the lead amongst women was, uh, VP Singh's lead amongst women was only 14%, while his lead amongst men has been uh, about 34%. So the usual traditional Congress uh, strength amongst women. Now, if the other part of the uh, uh, finding of the exit poll was about the age groups. And you can see that, again, uh, marginally Shastri, that's the Congress candidate, Sunil Shastri, did better among the older age group. That's 46 plus, which is a bit young. 46 is a little young to call people old, but in this categorization, one has put it into the old category. And he did slightly better. He got 28% compared to 24 and 26. And VP Singh uh, did best among the middle age group and uh, slightly, uh, uh, slightly lower, 4% lower. That's 56% amongst the older age group. So those are just the profile of what people voted, how they voted. And I must uh, say we, we uh, want add one further factor, and we shall show something about this later, maybe in the next program. It's about the caste composition of the uh, voting behavior. Basically, the lead by VP Singh and his uh, support came right across all castes. Um, he dominated, I mean, it wasn't a question of a caste vote at all. He, he's, he seems to be leading amongst all the castes. Uh, we shall actually give you hard figures on that later, if it's possible to uh, actually compute them, because these things are done in a rush. But it wasn't a caste election at all. Pranoye's exit poll, in Allahabad, where the whole country is looking at this time, Shri Vishwanath Pratap Singh will vote more than 55% and his vote will be more than 1,000,000 votes. The second thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. The second thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. The third thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. The third thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. The third thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. The third thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. The third thing is that the exit poll is more than 1,000,000 votes. श्री श्रीशनील शास्त्री को कम वोट पड़े रूरल और अर्बन दोनों इलाकों से जो पुरुष हैं उनमें से 36 प्रतिशत ने श्री वीपी सिंह की तरफ अपना झुकाव दिखाया और 14 परसेंट महिलाओं ने 14 प्रतिशत महिलाओं ने श्री वीपी सिंह की तरफ झुकाव दिखाया अगर हम इसको उम्र के लिहाज से देखें तो 21 से लेकर पैंतीस तक पैंतीस साल तक की उम्र के उनसठ लोगों ने श्री विश्वनाथ प्रताप सिंह की तरफ झुकाव दिखाया है छत्तीस से लेकर छियालीस साल तक की उम्र के लोगों में से 60 प्रतिशत लोगों ने श्री वीपी सिंह की तरफ झुकाव दिखाया है और 46 साल से अधिक की उम्र के लोगों में से 56 प्रतिशत लोगों ने श्री विश्वनाथ प्रताप सिंह की तरफ झुकाव दिखाया है इसके मुकाबले कांग्रेस आए के श्री सुनील शास्त्री को 21 से 35 साल की उम्र में 26 प्रतिशत छत्तीस से 46 साल की उम्र में 24 प्रतिशत और छियालीस से ज्यादा की उम्र में अट्ठाईस प्रतिशत वोट मिलने की संभावना है uh, we know the only thing I should add is that this is uh, an experiment, and uh, we may be embarrassed later on in the program. But as far as we, we are concerned, it was done as scientifically as possible. So as the results unfold, we'll see whether exit the exit poll is accurate or not. But I should like to make that qualification. But one thing we do have is, uh, since there is a lot of focus uh, on Allahabad, we have uh, Doordarshan has organized with fairly elaborate arrangements live uh, telecasting from Allahabad. So if we can go across there now, we haven't quite tested it yet, but we want to see whether we can go across there and get Shekhar Gupta, who's been writing and reporting on Allahabad, to tell us what the scene is on the spot. So if we can just see uh, from Allahabad, Shekhar Gupta. Thank you, Pranoyim. This is Shekhar Gupta in Allahabad. The counting began here five hours ago. And as you can see, there's great excitement but the counting process has been very, very slow for obvious reasons. 
But before I get into that, I can bring you some news from the counting tables. Only about 21,000 votes have been counted so far, but Mr. VP Singh of Jan Morcha has already established a lead of 6,500 votes over his nearest rival, Sunil Shastri of the Congress I. The third main contender, Mr. Kanshi Ram of Bahujan Samaj Party, is trailing behind Mr. Shastri by another 2,700 votes. The second round of counting will begin in about half an hour from now. As you know, the poll had to be ordered in two of the polling booths because of complaints of rigging and booth capturing yesterday. A little while earlier, we spoke to the three main contenders involved in this election. Mr. Vishwanath Pratap Singh of the Jan Morcha, Mr. Sri Shasi of the Congress I, and Mr. Kanshi Ram of Bahujan Samaj. There were at least 65 others who had no such worries. These are the independents who made the Allahabad ballot paper so unwieldy. Just a while ago, we spoke to Mr. Dharti Pakar Madan Lal, who is one of the most colorful of the lot. शादी के बाद उसका परिवार होता है ससुराल का परिवार और वो लड़की शादी के बाद अपने माँबाप को परिवार समझती है और ससुराल का माल अगर घर में रख दी तो उसको कुलंकी नहीं कहती हैं और ससुराल को अपना परिवार समझे तो उसको कुलवंती कहती हैं इस प्रकार से मेरी ये मानता है कि राजनीति में विधानसभा पार्लियामेंट में को what he has to say about it. Yes. Why has the counting process been so slow so far? The counting process has been slow because the number of candidates is very large. We have 68 candidates and it is taking a lot of time to uh, see every ballot paper and then put it in the particular tray. When do you, when do you expect clearer trends to emerge? The clearer trends will emerge uh, sometimes around midnight. And when do you think you will be able to declare the final result? The final result we expect uh, to declare sometimes by tomorrow evening. The first round uh, figures are with us now. And uh, after the completion of the counting of first round, Mr. VNP Singh is leading by about 9,200 votes over Mr. Sunil Shastri. About 27,300 votes have been counted in the first round. Thank you very much. So much for now. I think by the time we come back for the next bulletin, we'll have a clear, clearer picture for you from here. This is Shekhar Gupta in Allahabad. I'm handing you over to Pranoy in Delhi. Thank you, Shekhar. Um, I couldn't get all of that, and I must uh, apologize for any interruptions that have taken place, but we are trying to get this sorted out. So it is uh, quite a mammoth task to uh, get you live and uh, hopefully teleconferencing from Allahabad, but uh, hopefully it will smoothen out as the evening goes on. But it does look as though the first indications are that VP Singh is doing well. Uh, of course, there's a long way to go, and we heard, I think, that the result will only be ready by tomorrow evening, but we hope in this analysis program, we'll be able to tell you more or less finally what will happen before the end of the evening. A quick look at the assembly positions. We looked at the Lok Sabha positions. Uh, basically, the Congress I is leading in five, it's gained one, and that's the, I was talking about the Rajasthan Assembly consisting of K3. It's quite an uh, uh, incredible um, win as well. Now, apart from that, uh, the BJP is leading in two. The Lokdal has not yet opened its mark. The Janta Party is leading in one, and the left front in West Bengal is leading in two. Uh, we have with us Chandan Mitra. Uh, who's been on our programs before, and uh, you're all familiar with him. Um, Chandan, so far, it's good news and bad news, as I said. That's one indication, because the swings are different in different parts of country, uh, the country, that by-elections are not like a general election, where you see a uniform swing. What do you gain out of what's happening so far? Well, I think you are quite right in saying that it's uh, not a uniform swing. Uh, I think the main thing is that it's somewhat of a confused verdict in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, we have the Congress doing extremely well. And the BJP has held on to the Lashkar seat with great difficulty, with a reduced margin uh, compared to last time. And in Rajasthan, of course, the Congress has um, gained the, the K3 seat. But then, then in Gujarat, the uh, united opposition seems to have swept everything before it. So I think it just reaffirms one uh, very old sort of statistical truism that a uh, united opposition manages to defeat the Congress and wherever the opposition is divided, it uh, tends to lose. So I think this is a point which has been established. Yeah. 
Yes. But I don't think there is a definite message coming through as yet. I see. Chandan Mitra ke mutabik, jo bhi is waqt trends hain hamare paas, wo ek uljhe huye faisle ki taraf ishara karte hain, confused verdict ki taraf ishara karte hain. Rajasthan mein, Gujarat mein BJP ki sthiti mazboot hai, Rajasthan mein Congress saai apni sthiti sudhaar rahi hai. Aur Pranoye ke exit poll ke mutabik, Shri Vishwanath Pratap Singh, ek laak voto se jeetne chahiye, halanki जैसा कि अभी इलाहाबाद से शेखर गुप्ता ने हमें बताया कि बहुत बड़ा काम है वहाँ पर वोटों की गिनती करना और नतीजा कल शाम तक ही आ पाएगा फिर भी अभी तक जो सूचना मिली है उसके मुताबिक श्री विश्वनाथ प्रताप सिंह 6,500 वोटों से आगे हैं दूसरे नंबर पर सुनील शास्त्री हैं और तीसरे नंबर पर बहुजन समाज पार्टी के श्री काशी है चंदन मित्रा ये भी मानते हैं कि अभी तक कोई सीधा साधा मैसेज या सीधा साधा संकेत इन इलाकों के वोटर ने नहीं दिया है ये एक उलझे हुए फैसले की तरफ इशारा है एक कन्फ्यूज वर्डिक की तरफ इशारा है इस मौके पर मैं एक सवाल चंदन मित्रा से पूछना चाहूँगा चंदन वुड यू लाइक टू कमेंट अपॉन द स्टाइल एंड द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ कैंपेनिंग इन दिस बाय इलेक्शन आई थिंक दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सर क्वेश्चन बिकॉज व्हाट वी हैव सीन दिस टाइम इज व्हाट कैन ओनली बी डिस्क्राइब्ड एज अ सडन ट्रिवियलाइजेशन ऑफ द पोलिटिकल प्रोसेस इट सेल्फ नॉट जस्ट कैंपेनिंग स्टाइल आई मीन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम इलाहाबाद ऑफ कोर्स दिस नॉट द फर्स्ट टाइम इट्स हैपन बट दिस टाइम इट वॉज टेकन टू आई थिंक अब्सर्ड सर ऑफ लेवल्स where sort of uh, senior characters television stars were brought into the campaigning and as a result the issues got completely sidelined which is quite a surprise considering that this time one would have thought that both the congress and the opposition would try to impress upon the major issues of the day since we've had a major political battle for the whole of last year it is quite a surprise that this time uh, the issues took a back seat and politics was completely trivialized i think this is a major development indeed मतलब कहने का मतलब ये कि जो मुद्दे थे वो पीछे हट गए और जो चुनाव प्रचार था उसका स्तर घटिया हो गया प्रणोय व्हाट इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ दिस बाय इलेक्शन और इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ एनी बाय इलेक्शन फॉर दैट मैटर देर आर सम जनरल फैक्टर्स दैट वन कैन से बट इन दिस स्पेसिफिक केस यू सी एन इम्पोर्टेंट फैक्टर इन बाय इलेक्शन इज अ कैंडिडेट पर्सनैलिटी बिकम्स मच मोर इम्पोर्टेंट दैन इन अ जनरल इलेक्शन वे पार्टी लेबल्स आर वेरी क्रिटिकल इफ यू लुक एट इन फैक्ट वॉट हैपन इन द लास्ट बाय इलेक्शन इन अलाहाबाद we'll get exactly what uh, the kind of thing i'm talking about now in 1984 on the lok sabha congress i vote in lahabad was 68% just a few months later in 1985 there are five assembly uh, segments which co constitute lahabad if you add them together uh, congress only got 37% of the vote in other words it dropped 31% in a few months now we have disaggregated that the 68% was actually achieved 20% of it was due to pure personality of uh, the well known amitabh bachchan who perhaps should have been standing there now i don't know whether the congress i is thinking twice about that and 11% of that was a general party drop all over the state so that drop in 31% was divided now these kind of personality factors are much more important than by elections than in general elections pranav ke mutabik kisi bhi upchunav mein aur khas kar in upchunav mein jo pratyashi hain उनकी शख्सियत उनका जो व्यक्तित्व है उसकी महत्ता ज़्यादा होती है और अगर पिछले चुनावों पर नज़र डाली जाए तो सन उन्नीस सौ में 60 68 परसेंट अड़सठ प्रतिशत वोट मिले थे कांग्रेस आय को और उसके एक साल बाद पांच असेंबली सीट के चुनाव में 37 प्रतिशत वोट मिले थे तो प्रोनोए के मुताबिक 20 प्रतिशत इसमें व्यक्तित्व को वोट गया और ग्यारह किसी भी पार्टी की पॉपुलरिटी को वोट गया उसकी कितनी लोकप्रियता है उसको वोट गया हमारा अगला चुनाव विश्लेषण रात नौ बजकर पचास मिनट पर होगा तब तक के लिए जाए Good evening. We are back with a live update on the by-elections. What do they all mean? We've got much more information in this program. So before we uh, proceed any further, let me tell you exactly what we're going to have. We have a panel of politicians with us, so there could be a stormy uh, debate. 
We will be going live to Allahabad in a few seconds to find out the very latest position. You'll be the first to know what's happening there in terms of the lead. Mr. VP Singh's juggernaut, is it rolling on further? And we'll have Sunil Shastri at Allahabad telling us and giving us an interpretation of exactly what's happening. But before we go to Allahabad, let's look at what the elections so far mean, the by-elections all across the country. Last time we started with the bad news uh, for the Congress. There's good news and bad news for the Congress. This time let's start with the good news. For them, Rajasthan has come as an oasis in a desert. Uh, the swing in favor of the Congress has been an amazing 9%. That's in favor of the Congress, plus 9% in, uh, in uh, Rajasthan. Sorry, I'm stuck on Allahabad. In Rajasthan, they have uh, won all the seats there. They've rested K3 for the first time in 17 years with a huge swing. Plus, they have won in Pali. Secondly, let's go to West Bengal. Now, that's the bad news. The Congress has done even worse now in West Bengal than they did in the last assembly elections, which you remember was a pretty poor performance. They're down 7%. So that's the next bit of bad news for them. In Haryana, the situation is not so bad for the Congress. Despite the fact that uh, Congress, in fact, has lost by 115,000 votes in Sirsa, uh, if you look at the actual voting pattern, uh, their votes have increased from the assembly by-elections in 87. Of course, it's a negative 19% from those heady days of 1984. But they are up 6% from last year. And that will be a little worrying for uh, Devi Lal. It's a slight slippage in his popularity. But perhaps a bit too early for it to really have dropped any further. Uh, we did actually an exit poll in the one very controversial seat, that's Faridabad, uh, where there's a lot of controversy. And this is what our finding was in the exit poll. Exit poll is asking people, as they come out of the polling booth, who they voted for. And this was done by MARG, a polling organization. And we covered 4,500 uh, uh, respondents, which is a very large sample, randomly selected, scientifically selected. Uh, as I reported earlier, we did the similar thing for uh, Allahabad. But here in Faridabad, unlike Allahabad, it showed a neck and neck race in Faridabad. There was now, this difference of Loktal 50% and Congress I 49% is not significant. It could go either way. That, from that kind of a, uh, opinion poll result, you cannot make a prediction. So it was neck and neck. And if you can see the actual details of it, uh, the Loktal was leading amongst the men but in, by 4%. But women, it was trailing. Congress was leading amongst women. In the urban areas, the Loktal was tra trailing by 19%. And I'll have something to ask our panelists soon about that. In the rural areas, though, the uh, Devi Lal bandwagon was still going strong at plus 24% lead over the Congress. But overall, those figures put together means a very, very neck and neck race in Faridabad, at least uh, that's what our exit poll shows. Uh, we'll be still waiting to see whether they actually <coughs> count in Faridabad. It's a very controversial case. But that's what the exit poll shows. It, it, and, that 1% difference is statistically not significant. Uh, that's three states so far. Going to Madhya Pradesh, that's better news for the Congress. Uh, the fact is that they've gone up 4% since the 1985 assembly elections. There's a swing in their favor. Uh, moving on to Gujarat, though, uh, this is where we really have a bad news for the Congress. And they really will have to do some hard searching about what's going on here. If we look at the swing here, it's a negative 10% against the Congress. Uh, the Janta Party has done has won uh, one of the seats, and there's a neck and neck fight in the other. And the BJP has won the third assembly seat. So it's a, it's a neck and neck fight in Gohat. Now going finally on to Uttar Pradesh, here. Apart from Allahabad, because we're going to Allahabad right now, taking the two assembly constituencies, uh, the Janta Party has done very well in Chaproli. They've won by 22,000 votes. But the Congress need not feel too disheartened. Their, their vote percentage, in fact, is, the, is uh, the same as what it was in 1985. So there's no swing away from them. And if you look at the other 
Uttar Pradesh constituency, Tanda, where there's a neck and neck fight going on. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, Congress is up, sometimes it's down by three or 400 votes. The vote percentage of the Congress is up 5%. There's a swing in its favor of 5%. So let's just summarize. In Rajasthan, it's good for the Congress. West Bengal, bad for the Congress. Haryana, there's a slight slippage in Devi Lal's uh, bandwagon. He'll be slightly worried about that. And the exit poll in Faridabad shows that it was a neck and neck race there, a very tough fight. Madhya Pradesh, good for the Congress, up 4%. Uh, could have been better, I suppose. They would have hoped for a little more. In Gujarat, very bad news for the Congress. And our earlier polls have been showing that. And there, there is some uh, real hard searching to be done there. Finally, in UP, it's uh, apart from Allahabad, which we'll be going to shortly, um, it's reasonably good news for the Congress. It's up 4%. Vinod. Congress is also good news for the Congress. It's also good news for the Congress. First of all, the good news is from Rajasthan. राजस्थान में स्विंग जो है वो 9 प्रतिशत कांग्रेस आई के पक्ष में है और उसके उदाहरण है पाली लोकसभा का चुनाव जो कांग्रेस आई ने जीता है उसके अलावा विधानसभा का उपचुनाव खेतड़ी चुनाव क्षेत्र से जो पिछले 17 साल में पहली बार कांग्रेस आई ने जीता है पश्चिमी बंगाल में पिछले चुनाव में हुई हार के बावजूद कांग्रेस अपनी स्थिति सुधार नहीं पाई है बल्कि उसकी स्थिति बदतर हुई है और ज़्यादा बिगड़ी है स्थिति सात प्रतिशत वोट कम पड़े हैं कांग्रेस आई को बंगाल में हरियाणा हालांकि सिरसा में चौधरी देवीलाल के लोक दल की जीत हुई है लेकिन पिछले विधानसभा चुनाव के मुकाबले कांग्रेस आई को छः प्रतिशत वोट ज़्यादा मिले हैं फरीदाबाद में एक एग्जिट पोल किया गया एग्जिट पोल यानी वोट डालने के बाद मतदाता जब बाहर आता है तो उससे पूछा जाता है कि आपने किसको वोट दिया तो फरीदाबाद में चार वोटर्स से पूछा गया और उसके आधार पर जो सूचना मिली है वो इस तरह से है कि लोकदल को पचास लोगों ने वोट दिया कांग्रेस आई को उनचास प्रतिशत लोगों ने वोट दिया और अन्य को एक प्रतिशत लोगों ने वोट दिया यानी फरीदाबाद में स्थिति एकदम बराबर की है मुकाबले की है और जब तक कोई सूचना नहीं आती अनुमान लगाना मुश्किल है मध्य प्रदेश खरसिया में जो उपचुनाव हुआ है विधानसभा का वहां पर कांग्रेस आई के पक्ष में चार प्रतिशत वोट ज़्यादा गया है गुजरात में दस प्रतिशत वोट कम गया है और उत्तर प्रदेश में हालांकि जनता पार्टी की विजय हुई है छपरौली में बाईस हज़ार वोट से लेकिन कांग्रेस आई की स्थिति सन पचासी के चुनावों वाली ही रही ना वोट की कमी हुई ना ही बढ़त हुई वेल विनोद वी जस्ट हर्ड इन फैक्ट दैट फ्रॉम मध्य प्रदेश खरसिया कंस्टिट्यूंसी वे अर्जुन सिंह इज फाइटिंग ही हैज जस्ट बीन डिक्लेयर इलेक्टेड ही डिफीटेड हिज राइवल बाई एट थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी एट वोट्स एंड सम ऑफ द न्यूज पेपर दैट्स अ टफ फाइट Uh, it's not quite a tough fight, but uh, perhaps he would have been happier with a larger margin and a traditionally strong Congress seat, but uh, we'll ask our panelists that later. But before we go to Allahabad, let me introduce the panelists. We have Gulam Nabi Azad, who's General Secretary of the All India Congress Committee, on the right corner. And on the left corner, we have Ajit Singh, who's President of the Janta Party, and who's been very critical all along the campaign. And Gulam Nabi Azad has, of course, been uh, very integral part of the campaign. And as an umpire, we have the eminent uh, Nihal Singh, who really needs no introduction as a political commentator. And when things get too rough, we hope he'll intervene and uh, <laughs> declare the result. We'll just watch. <coughs> we'll just wait to watch. But before we do anything, let's go for what, uh, for what everybody really is waiting for, live to Allahabad. Thank you, Pranay. This is Shekhar Gupta in Allahabad again. I'm afraid I don't have too much for you by, by way of news, except saying that Mr. V.P. Singh has increased his lead by another 3,000 votes. Um, this is after the completion of first round of, poll, of counting in five assembly segments and the second round in two. The progress here is extremely slow, and the reasons for that are not far to seek. There are 65 candidates here. A lot of them have their agents inside. It's a very contentious election. All of them are raising objections to all kinds of things. And the officials here are very pessimistic about the prospects of declaring the final result even by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it's likely that there would be 13 to 14 rounds of counting. And by early hours of tomorrow, they don't expect to complete more than six rounds. The only clear trend that has emerged so far is that Mr. V.P. Singh is leading his nearest rival, Mr. Sunil Shastri, in each one of the five assembly segments. And these include even the two segments which are held by the Congress I in the assembly. 
we had tried to get Mr. Sunil Shastri, the Congress I candidate, for a live interview here at this time. And he tried to come in, but en route he was mobbed by a crowd and he was not able to come in. After this bulletin, we'll try and interview him at his place and maybe we'll be able to bring, bring him to you in the next bulletin. Now we have with us Mr. Sanjay Singh. He's, he's, he's one of the senior campaigners of uh, Mr. V.P. Singh's party. In fact, he's his chief election agent. He's also the convener of the Yuva Jan Morcha. We have, here, we, ha we have him here with us to answer a few questions. Mr. Singh, what does the trend of counting so far indicate? Well, Mr. Gupta, is, uh, victory of Mr. V.P. Singh is absolutely sure. And he's going to win in each and every assembly segment. Do you see any possibility of a reversal of the trend? No chance. <coughs> he, he's going to win absolutely. How can you say that so confidently? Because I have seen that it was an election of each and every voters of this constituency. And everyone is so involved, which I have experienced for the last one and a half months. By how many votes do you think are you going to win? He should win around with margin of around two lakhs. You and your party have been complaining a lot about rigging in the poll. Now that you seem to be doing all right, do you still repeat those complaints? No, there are there definitely there are a lot of complaints in each, a lot of ma majority of these polling stations, that their uh, Congress workers and with a lot of hoodlums came and tried to capture all, so many polling stations. That is why we lodged all sort of complaints. How much money have you spent in this election? I, as far as I, my knowledge is concerned about the expenses, it should not go beyond 30 to 35,000. How do you say so? Because your campaign has finally had a lot of cars, loudspeakers, banners, posters, all that costs a lot of money. It was, it was all done by the volunteers. It was not by any central organization. But I think one of your main campaign planks to begin with was that this will be a people's election and you will not have posters, you will not have cars, Mr. V.P. Singh campaigned on motorcycles. Yes, we did not use any posters, any, any uh, pamphlets, any posters. But if your supporters did that, you think that's all right? That is all right. Absolutely it is all right. Suppose you win this election, where does your party go from here? It will be starting as the breaking of this system which was for which Mr. V.P. Singh was fighting. He was just saying that all corrupt, corrupt practices in all high places should be stopped. And I am confident that this sort of winning of this victory of this election, V.P. Singh is going to really uh, create an atmosphere in the whole country that everybody, is, every citizen of this country is started awakening about this. What will be your party's next step? This will decide after, after the victory. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Thank you very much. We also have with us Mr. Ashok Bajpai, who is uh, one of the senior Congress I leaders here. He is a former Congress I legislator and he was a very active campaigner for the Congress I. While we try to reach Mr. Sunil Shastri at his house, we have here with us Mr. Bajpai. Mr. Bajpai, what does the trend so far indicate to you? The trend definitely shows a tilt towards Mr. V.P. Singh as far as the counting results have uh, come in, but it is too premature to make any final uh, decision as to what would be the situation because only three rounds have been completed and there have been a lot of places where Congress has won. So far it seems that Mr. V.P. Singh is leading uniformly in all the, all the segments. No, he is not leading uniformly in all the segments. Uh, there are segments where he has lost and in fact there are polling stations where he has lost not only to Congress party but has also lost to the BSP. Well, I'm talking not of the polling stations but I'm talking of the segments and that's what it seems to us. But do you think there is still a chance of reversal? Yes, uh, we are quite hopeful. Uh, you see, uh, the polling stations are numbered serially. So there are certain pockets of influence of the Congress which will definitely be counted and we hope that before uh, the fourth or fifth round is over we will be able to check the trend. Thank you very much Mr. Bajpay. That's all we have for now. Uh, by our next bulletin we should be able to bring you up to date uh, figures after the second round of counting and maybe after, the, after part of the third round of counting and we'll try to have here live Mr. VP Singh. Thank you. This is Shekhar Gupta in Allahabad taking you back to Pranay in Delhi. Thank you, Shekhar. Uh, you uh, were a bit hesitant to announce that uh, VP Singh himself has promised to come on the 12 o'clock show, which is our next bulletin after this, after your experience with uh, Sunil Shastri, I suppose. But uh, we'll probably have both Sunil Shastri recorded and VP Singh perhaps live, as he's promised to come on the 12 o'clock show. Uh, but over to you, Vinod, what do you feel so far? Uh, 
हिंदी भाषी दर्शकों के लिए जो कुछ भी इलाहाबाद में भी बातचीत हुई उसका एक छोटा सा मैं आपको जिस दे देता हूँ तर्जुमा कर देता हूँ अनुवाद कर देता हूँ शेखर गुप्ता ने डॉक्टर संजय सिंह से पूछा कि आप लोगों की आप लोगों का आरोप था कि चुनाव में बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर रिगिंग होगी बेईमानी होगी क्या आप अब भी उस आरोप को मानते हैं या उसका अभी भी लगाएंगे उस पर डॉक्टर संजय सिंह का कुछ जवाब संतुष्टि हमें संतुष्ट नहीं कर पाया दूसरा सवाल शेखर गुप्ता का ये था कि इस पूरे चुनाव प्रचार में जन मोर्चा ने कितने पैसे खर्च किए हैं तो उसके जवाब में डॉक्टर संजय सिंह ने कहा कि लगभग तीस या पैंतीस हज़ार रुपये खर्च किए हैं और अगर वॉल्टियर्स जो जन मोर्चा के वॉल्टियर्स हैं खुद अपना पैसा खर्च करते हैं तो इससे उन्हें कोई किसी किसी किस्म का एतराज़ नहीं है कांग्रेस आए के श्री अशोक वाजपेयी को अभी तक का उनका अभी तक ये मानना है कि विश्वास से नहीं कहा जा सकता कि श्री वी सिंह ही चुनाव जीतेंगे हो सकता है कि मतगणना के दौरान ट्रेंड्स में कुछ तब्दीली आए रिवर्सल हो जाए फिलहाल अभी तक जो पोजीशन है असेंबली इलेक्शन की जैसा कि प्रणा ने भी बताया वो इस तरह से है कि कांग्रेस आई पांच जगह पर आगे है और एक स्थान का उनको फायदा हो रहा है बीजेपी दो जगह पर आगे है लोकदल अभी तक कहीं पर भी आगे नहीं है जनता एक जगह पर आगे है लेफ्ट फ्रंट दो जगह पर आगे है Gulam Nabi Azad, uh, good evening, good evening. and welcome to the show. Um, you just heard Sanjay Singh saying they had spent thirty-five thousand rupees. You have accused VP Singh of spending one point six crores. How much have you spent? Well, uh, I have not spent only one point six crore. I have spent one point sixty-one crore. One point six one crores. Six one crores. Okay. So you don't agree with thirty-five thousand? No, not at all. Okay. And uh, it's most unfortunate a person saying like this. He wanted to fight the corruption at the high level, and he wants to fight the corruption with money, money power. A party which is still in infancy, which is not, which is still you have to burn. And he's the person who has himself said on a number of occasions that this is not a party at all. It is just individual. One individual can spend 1.61 lakhs. I think this is very amazing. Uh, But how does that compare with your expenditure? That was the second part of my question. Well, as for the Congress party is concerned, this is a 104-year-old party, and we have been ruling uh, both in states and center for the past 40 years. We can claim that our party people are in a position to spend money on their own from their own pocket. But on the other side, a person who is uh, who doesn't have the party, who doesn't have the party workers, uh, how can he spend so much of money? How uh, how does uh, how does this imply that a party which is 104 years old and has been in power for 40 years, therefore will have more money? The no, no, will have no. More this is the involvement of more workers and more participants, because it is a big paraphernalia. So there is no need of spending the money because everybody is capable of spending money from his own pocket. Because they've been because in power for 40 years. Power. No, because they, it's not only because of uh, being in power for 40 years. But it's the question of the workers' participation. Not that so they have made the money. Not, not they have the made. This oh, more participation. But on the other side, he doesn't have the workers with him. Whatever work he is getting done, it is after paying the money. That's the difference. No, I'm surprised uh, how Mr. Gulam Nabi Azad came up with that figure to begin with. Second thing is saying that Jan Morcha or the opposition candidate, he's a joint opposition candidate, doesn't have any workers. If you look at it, uh, I went there. I spent some time. There are workers from all over the country coming on their own. is spending from their pocket so i don't know how you can say that congress is 104 years old and you specifically said they have been in power so they can spend more money there i'll agree that's exactly the reason they are spending more money they have been in power they have been misusing that power to collect money and trying to win elections by money power now when the question comes up that vp singh also spent so much money or put up posters and all that See the point of VP Singh's campaign is that money power should not be used to win elections. He is not saying that you don't put up any posters or anything at yeah, all. He said it. But no, no posters at all. But the spirit of his announcement, the whole fight has been that Congress has been winning on money power, on the government patronage. Well, I can. In fact, there is hardly any distinction between the government okay. and the Congress party campaign. One can small I, can point, I if I might interrupt. Yes. Uh, <coughs> how about these motorcycles? You know, the, uh, there was a great fleet of motorcycles. Yes, they were all individually owned. Yes, they were. Yes, of course. No, I must. No. I must differ. You don't here. think? I, I don't think you can hire a lot of motorcycles. I, I must differ anyway. here. Mm. Almost. And even you do, it costs much more, less, much less I, than hiring. I a must. Car. I must differ here with Ajit Ji, 
um, out of the 3,000 motorcycles, 2.5,000 were brought from Haryana by Devi Lalji. And I saw myself with my own eyes unloading the motorcycles from the Haryana trucks. What you are saying is that before Mr. Devi Lalji said there were no <coughs> motorcycles? Well, even yesterday, I saw myself, Devi Lalji, with 300 motorcycle riders dropping them from one polling booth okay, to so another so 300 polling booth. riders, 300 motorcycles. I think before, right. can yeah. I just say that before we get into the figures and number of motorcycles, etc., I'd just like to ask uh, you about, uh, since uh, uh, Chosi Devi Lal's name has been raised, he has said that VP Singh will be the leader of the opposition. Do you subscribe to that? See, my view and most of the opposition leaders subscribe to this view is we need to come on a platform and fight on certain issues. The question of who the leader would be, we'll leave it to the, you know, when we are all together fighting on issues, someone will emerge, or in a democracy, it's the right of the elected members to elect their leader. I think it's a little premature to raise that issue. But would you, no, it's a simple question of yes or no, would you support VP Singh as your leader? What I'm saying is I support that all opposition parties get together on a platform and fight the Congress on issues. It's immaterial who the leader is. You haven't replied a question. Actually, I've just asked you a simple question yeah. and a simple no. answer. No, yes or no? I don't think I'm on a witness stand so that I answer <laughs> yes or no. Okay, I made fine. my position very clear. Okay, one inference which I want to draw. You yes. said that VP Singh said that election should not be won on <coughs> Manipur. Yes. My inference is that he says ma election should not be won on Manipur, but he doesn't mind spending money. No, no, what he's saying is the money power that Congress is able to throw in these elections distorts the will of the people. Money has to be spent in elections, propaganda has to be done. You have to get your views across to the voter. But the amount of money that Congress, by virtue of being in power for the last 40 years, is able to throw in election distorts the electorate's views. Can I, so can I just ask uh, uh, Nihal Singh to join in because, uh, uh, again, we, I think the... And one more thing before I say that, even in USA, the opposition... Uh, candidate is given government money to fight the election. So we should make some arrangement like that here. Then Fine. can I interrupt here? Well, I think this is, a, one should understand that my friend Ajitji still has a doubt in his mind that uh, he's not, his party is not going to accept him as the leader. So it is a just opportunistic alliance which has made them to contest the uh, Alabad election. Otherwise, there was no conviction uh, between all these political parties. They are right from left to the uh, right center, and there is no this uh, whole alliance between these political parties is based on how to defeat the Congress without being any basic principles, without being any having any ideology, and uh, any election and any alliance which is not based on principles and programs, I don't think that's going to last but long. But one thing that these elections have shown, these by-elections, that when the opposition unites with one candidate, it tends to get the support of the uh, electorate. Can I just switch to another topic and introduce... Uh, Mr. Rao, can, 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 right can I just... Can I just... I know it's very difficult for Mr. Nihal Singh to come in with it. But can I just ask you, uh, Mr. Nihal Singh, <laughs> that you have watched these campaign, the campaigning and uh, the methods of campaigning, and I'm referring to... Uh, uh, you know, various godheads being uh, used in the campaigning. Do you see this as a change? Do you see it was started by NTR? Uh, do you see that, uh, do you, what do you feel about this kind of uh, method of campaigning? Well, I think what has essentially happened is that uh, what was restricted so far to the south of the Vindyas has come north, uh, with a difference. Because uh, in the south we've seen uh, politicians who were either uh, the great Robin Hoods, or, uh, say, N.T. Rama Rao, who has uh, taken godly attributes, not only in what he says, but also in the dress. Uh, now, of course, in the North, uh, we didn't have such candidates. Does it work? So, well, apparently it does, at least in the South. Uh, but, you know, the trouble in the North was that uh, there were no such candidates. So what they've done is they've gone to a soap opera on an epic, and taking characters from that and try to bring them in and uh, while well, hoping that some of that would rub off, uh, which I think um, is, is a rather reprehensible thing. I think at this stage, we should ask Mr. Azad. When Congress had decided that 
रामायण में जो अभिनेता हैं अरुण गोविल जो राम का अभिनय करते हैं उनको अलाहाबाद भेजा जाए तो आपके जहन में अलाहाबाद के वोटर की कैसी तस्वीर थी कि वोटर कैसा होता है क्या वो ऐसे झांसों में आ जाता है या ऐसी बातों से वो प्रेरित होकर वोट देने का कांग्रेस आई आप, आपके जहन में सोच क्या थी उस वक्त नहीं जब अरुण गोयल आया अलाहाबाद में उन्होंने हर पब्लिक मीटिंग में यही बताया कि जब वो अभी बम्बई में ही थे और उनको तकरीबन दो महीने से प्रयास कर रहे थे वीपी सिंह जी अपनी तरफ घुमाने के लिए और कई दफ़ा उन्होंने उनके पास आदमी भेजे और ये लाने के लिए कि आप अलाहाबाद आओ मेरे लिए कंपेन करने के लिए और जब उन्होंने कंपेन करने से इनकार कर दिया तो तब वीपी सिंह जी ने स्टेटमेंट दिया कि ये राम नहीं है बल्कि रावण है सवाल इस चीज इस चीज को मानकर वो वहाँ उनके खिलाफ प्रचार करने के लिए आए कांग्रेस ने क्यों मंजूर किया ये उनका प्रचार करना या किसी सीने अभिनेता का या किसी अभिनेता का प्रचार में इस्तेमाल कांग्रेस ने क्यों नहीं वो तो एक सीजन हर इस मुल्क का मेरे ख्याल में उसको पूरा हक है जैसे कोई भी सीजन का किसी और सीजन का हक है उतना ही उसका भी हक है चाहे अगर वो टीवी सीरियल में काम करता है लेकिन वो हिंदुस्तान का एक नागरिक है हिंदुस्तान के एक वोटर है और हर हिंदुस्तान के एक नागरिक का एक वोटर का हक है अगर वो फील करता है किसी पार्टी की मदद करना मैं नहीं समझता इसमें ले, लेकिन आपने इस तरह से अलाहाबाद के वोटर की धार्मिक भावनाओं को भड़काने की कोशिश की क्योंकि गोविल साहब गोविल की तरह जाके उन्होंने वहाँ पर प्रचार नहीं किया उन्होंने प्रचार किया रामायण में जो राम है उनकी तरह तो सवाल ये है कि गोविल साहब जाके कर सकते थे प्रचार लेकिन उनकी क्या मतलब कांग्रेस ने तो उनको प्रेजेंट ऐसे किया कि वो रामायण के राम हैं और वो कांग्रेस के कैंडिडेट के लिए ख्याल में अगर अजीत सिंह जी कहीं जाएंगे तो वो कहेंगे की जनता पार्टी के जो प्रेजिडेंट है वो आ रहेंगे खाली अजीत सिंह बताएंगे तो आई डोंट थिंक एनी बडी विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड विच अजीत सिंह जैसा कि निहाल सिंह जी ने कहा कि विंध्या में पहले हो रहा है इस तरह की चीज़ें था एम जी आर ने भी इसी तरह किया प्रेम नजीर भी के लेकिन जैसा उन्होंने कहा कि ये गलत बात है वहाँ भी और जो नॉर्थ में आ रहा है ये और भी ज़्यादा है तो इस तरह का इस्तेमाल करना धार्मिक भावनाओं का गलत है मेरे ख्याल में वहाँ अपोजिशन कर रही थी तो इसलिए उस पर कोई ऑब्जेक्शन नहीं हो सकती क्योंकि खाली कांग्रेस नहीं कर सकती अपोजिशन जो चाहे उसे वो कर सकती नहीं सवाल हम अलाहाबाद के इलेक्शन का सवाल बाई इलेक्शन का कर रहे हैं आई वॉन्ट वास्ट क्वेश्चन मिस निहाल सिंह दिस इज प्रोबेबली द लास्ट बाई इलेक्शन बिफोर द नेक्स्ट जनरल इलेक्शन वट डू यू थिंक इज द मैसेज गिवन बाई द इलेक्ट्रेट अकॉर्डिंग टू द ट्रेंड अवेलेबल नाउ Well, the message is mixed, but I think one part of the message which is clear is that there is a, a lot of dissatisfaction with the Congress Party. Okay, I'll do a brief recap. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. अगले आम चुनाव से पहले शायद ही आखरी उपचुनाव थे, लेकिन भारत के नागरिक ने ना ही कांग्रेस आई को और ना ही विपक्ष को अपनी मंशा जाहिर की है या अपनी इच्छा जाहिर की है। उसने सीधा सादा ये संदेश दिया है कि अभी अगले आम चुनाव में डेढ़ साल का वक्त है और वो दोनों को पक्ष को और विपक्ष को जांचेगा परखेगा कैन आई जस्ट आस्क वन लास्ट राउंड अप क्वेश्चन लिटरली वन सेंटेंस ईच बेस्ड ऑन दिस बाय इलेक्शन रिजल्ट्स वुड यू लाइक टू सी अ जनरल इलेक्शन हेल्ड टुमारो वी आर रेडी फॉर जनरल इलेक्शंस एनी टाइम एंड यू सर well these by elections are not going to affect the popularity of the congress party not so ever it may be maybe at the center level and the uh, and the state level but we have still one and a half years ahead to go why should we go for the elections thank you uh, before we wind up let's just have a quick summary view at what the latest position is uh, the lok sabha position is as follows uh, some of these leadings are actually results allahabad Uh, the Jan Morsha is leading by 12,000 votes now, and as we heard live from Alaba, they're leading in every assembly segment. Sirsa, that's a result. The Lok Dal has won by about 120,000 votes. That's one lakh 20,000 votes. For Idabad, there's no counting. Pali, the Congress has swept with almost 40,000 votes. Godra, which is a reversal, uh, the Janata Party has swept with almost 40,000 votes. That's quite a surprise. Tura and Udampur, the counting will only start tomorrow. Now, if we look at the assembly situation here, uh, Chaprawali in Uttar Pradesh, the Janata Party is has won. In fact, in Rajasthan, Khetri, the Congress I has won. That's a, a, a major victory for them. In Lakshar East, the BJP is winning. In Dwarka, has won. In fact, in Dwarka, the Congress I 
is leading at the moment, but it's neck and neck. In Malia, the BJP has won now. Uh, in Gohad, the Congress, uh, it's a bit confusing. In Gohad, uh, the Congress I is leading. Uh, now, the two uh, constituencies, West Bengal, that's Kumargram and Barabani, the left front, that's one is RSP and one is CPM, are doing even better than they did before. And in Karsia, in Madhya Pradesh, Arjun Singh, the chief minister, has won and has been re-elected uh, with a margin of just over 8,500 votes. Now that's a final tally position. Congress I is leading in five. Neither gained nor lost anything so far. At least it's a net zero position compared to the earlier position. The BJP is leading in two. It's also not gained or lost in a net position. The Lokdal has won one, and that's a gain. Uh, the Janta Party has won one, that's neither a gain nor a loss. And the left front has retained its two seats in the West Bengal. Well, our next program will in fact be at uh, 12 o'clock, where we'll go again live to Allahabad, where the story still carries on. And VP Singh has promised to come live, uh, so we can ask some of these questions that we've had uh, today. We can ask him as well. Right. Good night, and thank you very much.